Welcome back. Heather Stamper here. And today is a book talk day. It feels like it's only been a month since my last book talk. Oh, wait, because it was. Yes. I uh, remember I decided to do the formats showcasing the books that I've read or listened to each month as part of the Pop Sugar Reading Challenge. So if you are following the Pop Sugar Reading Challenge, Hopefully some of these books might help you find prompts that you are looking for. And if not, well, that's okay too. Maybe you find another good book anyway. So I want to get things started today with an audio book that my husband and I listened to. It's Neil Gaiman's Sandman Part 2, put together by Dirk Maggs. If you remember earlier, I talked about the first Sandman uh, recording. And I really enjoyed it because it's an all-star cast and it's basically taking the original graphic novel comic book series and breathing it to life through a radio play. Now, some people will say, mm, you know, it's a little too episodic and kind of random in the storytelling. Um, hi, did I mention it's a part of a collection of comic books? If you are thinking a continuous storyline, sorry to say, you're mistaken. Now, there are some multi-episode storylines within the recording itself. So the adaptation has the same cast as the first one. Kat Dennings is Death. McAvoy is the voice for Morpheus the, of the Endless, the Dream Lord. And you can have other people like David Tennant is Loki. For all my Doctor Who fans out there, David Tennant is Loki. Woo! So, yeah, I got a little geeked out there. It's okay. It's all right. So here's what's happening in this one. We have stories that have to do with redeeming uh, a lost lover from the bowels of hell, interacting with the French Revolution and Robespierre, ancient Rome with, with the different emperors. And you have in the eight, 19th century San Francisco, um, including a story from Mark Twain uh, about the emperor of the United States, which is actually a thing. Uh, 8th century Baghdad, contemporary New York City, which probably has the longest story arc other than the one where he's rescuing his, uh, his princess, Nwada. We got the story of this young lady who had all these imaginary friends and turns out those imaginary friends had s some serious secrets. It's awesome. I gave it five bookmarks. One, because I am partial to the works of Neil Gaiman, close to my heart. And two, it's just great storytelling. And Neil Gaiman being the narrator with his amazing voice, you can't go wrong. If you're looking for a fantasy audiobook series, Audible, The Sandman, part one and part two, I'm really hoping there's going to be a part three because the universe is massive. Uh, this one was a spinoff of a manga, uh, a Japanese comic called Ancient Magus Bride, The Golden Yarn, compiled by Kori Yamazaki. You get four bookmarks. It has parallel universe. Um, if you're familiar with the manga or the animated series, Ancient Magus Bride is about a mage and his uh, slave eggy, an ordinary girl named Chize. Slay be beggies are special because, you know, it's like they're kind of like amplifiers of magic and you got to be very careful with them. Uh, and it's just a very unique universe where it has a component of real world, modern England, Scotland, and Ireland for the most part. And then you've got the world of the Fae, the neighbors, as they like to call them, with Leon Sedays and uh, different warlocks and things like that, dragons. Um, that kind of lie in the invisible half world. And it's just really neat. And so if you really like those types of stories, it was my first light novel that I read. I, I've not really read any of those before. Got it as a Christmas present from my husband because he knows how much I love the series. But I, it was really neat to see how some of the characters were flushed out uh, the, and the side stories is like, oh yeah, I remember that guy from episode such and such in season one. So that's how he got to be that way. Okay, okay. You know, things like that. And of course, it has our favorite main characters in it as well. The next book was The Diving Bell and the Butterfly by Jean-Dominique Babé. Uh, it was for the prompt for a mobility aid. This is a memoir about the, from the editor-in-chief of the French Elle magazine. He suffered a massive stroke 
that leaves him with locked in syndrome. His mind is perfectly fine, but his body is pretty much frozen in, in paralysis from the stroke. The only part of him that can move is he can blink his left eye. And so they came up with a way to find out what he was trying to tell people by how many blinks for each letter. Yeah. And he told this whole story through left eye blinks, 132 pages transcribed by eye blinks into French and then into other languages. They made a movie about it. It won Academy Awards. Very compelling. There's parts where it's kind of surreal because it's his interpretation of what's going on in the hospital and how he interacts with his wife and his young children and how he's dealing with the loss of his normalcy. So again, I Blinks wrote 132 pages. Go check it out. He gave it five, five bookmarks because it's just uh, amazing. Next book I read was Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. This falls under the category of a sapphic story, woman, uh, women telling the story. I gave it four bookmarks. It's a story of Camino and Yahira. These two girls live in two different countries. Camino lives in the Dominican Republic and is just barely scratching out a living with her aunt and her dad. She only sees her dad um, for three months out of the year because he's a traveling business man. That's what she's been told. But they were able to get her into a really good school school because she wants to be a doctor. And so she's in her junior, senior year and getting ready to graduate and take that next step. Yahaira is, lives in, the, in New York City. And her dad is with her for nine months out of the year because he's a traveling salesman. You think there's a theme here? Hmm. Yeah. Um, they live uh, in a very affluent uh, apartment. Uh, her mom and her, and she's got a wonderful girlfriend. And then catastrophe happens. Their father, oh, wait, did I mention? They have the same father. This guy had a secret life, secret marriage, Camino being the secret part. And that's why he was going back and forth, traveling businessman that he was. There was a plane accident. The plane went down in the ocean and there were no survivors. So now as they're trying to pick up the pieces, these two girls find out about each other and how they come to terms with their father and what he did and what what they think of each other and how can they move on find you know have love and forgiveness and all of those things because there's a there's a lot of things to unpack there you know you got the affluent sister you got the one that's barely making ends meet with her with her aunt and you know she's always on the verge of being picked up by a pimp that before her father's death had bought off, you know, it's like, leave my daughter alone. Well, now that the father is dead, he's, he's been circling around trying to get her to, um, yeah, things like that. But again, really good story, you know, very complicated. I highly recommend it. The next story uh, I read, uh, listened to, this one I listened to, was Una Out of Order by Margarita Montemore. This is a book that's set mostly in the 1980s, which was the theme for this one. Five out of five uh, bookmarks on this one because it reminds me so much of Quantum Leap. Well, if you were a kid in the 80s and 90s, Quantum Leap was the sci-fi show to watch. You had the scientists that jumped around within his own uh, lifetime into different bodies and he had his uh, hologram friend that, you know, helped him figure out what bad things needed to be fixed in order for him to hopefully make it home one day. So we have this, the girl, Una, when she turns 19 on New Year's, at the stroke of midnight on New Year's in 1982, she kind of goes into like a dizzy spell and she wakes up. She's 52 years old and it's the year. 2004. Eep. Yeah, that's quite the wake up. Waiting for her is a friendly stranger named Kenzie and her mom is there. And apparently mom knows all about this. And there's a letter from her former self explaining, you know, you're going to 
you 19 year old Una is going to be in this 52 year old body for one whole year. There are things you need to know. You know, these are the records that are kept to make sure that you um, can live comfortably and, you know, how to go about your business, you know, take some time, trust Kenzie, trust your mom. They're the ones that know everything. And then on her next birthday, she leaps again, but it's not back into her 19 year old self or 20 year old self. Next time she's 27 and is a club person. You know, the Una that is her when she's 27 is clubbing in the early 90s. And so the whole story is based on the decisions made each year and how, even though she is in non consecutive order, she ends up coming to have a full, meaningful life. And it was just a really, interesting story. There's no rhyme or reason as to why she's like this. Unlike Quantum Leap, there was a science experiment gone wrong. They do like lots of little shout outs to different cultural phenomenons that were happening in each of her leaps. It's very, very cool. So again, the sci-fi fantasy geek in me was extremely happy. The next one I read was Born a Crime uh, from a South African childhood by Trevor Noah. This one uh, falls in the category of having two languages. This is about uh, the comedian's memoirs growing up in uh, apartheid and post-apartheid South Africa and where literally his very existence is considered a crime because he is of a mixed union. His mom was uh, Hosa. African and his father is Swiss and he couldn't be seen with his father because then everyone would know but yet when he was with his mother she had to play kind of like the nanny because he was too light in comparison to her so very tense And it basically goes through his story of him growing up. Some of those anecdotes are extremely hilarious. Wait until you read about the part where um, he has to use the bathroom and he's in his kitchen as a child. Hilarious. And then there's parts that are extremely gritty and and sad and, and tough to hear. You know, it's like as he's getting older and mom in her efforts to try and have her child rise above, you know, his circumstances ends up with a boyfriend that becomes a stepfather that is, he, he's very abusive. He's very troubling and it nearly costs her her life. I won't go any further than that because spoilers would, would happen, but extremely well done. And, and the parts that are funny are really, really funny. And the parts that are, uh, are extremely, uh, so bear that in mind when you read this book. Five out of five bookmarks, definitely a win. Another book that I read, Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Adeyemi. Gave it four bookmarks. This is the second uh, in the Arisha Chronicles. Uh, The first one was Children of Blood and Bone. I reviewed that earlier in the year. This falls under the category of a romance by a person of color. So it continues following the story of Zeli and Amari and Inan as magic is finally bought, brought back to the people of Orisha. But now the kingdom is on the brink of civil war against the Magi and the monarchy, those that want to keep the status quo and those that say, no, nah, no, nah, we've had enough of this nonsense. So it's one of those definite, there's love triangles, there's power that corrupts absolutely. And there's going to be a third book. So I'm withholding final judgment until the third book comes out, which I'm thinking probably would be the last, but you know, whatever, (laughs) you know, it's like very, very interesting, very engrossing story. So definitely worth checking out. The last one I did was If I Stay by Gail Foreman. This one has a band or a music group in it. Could have also used that same category for Una Out of Order because there's a lot of music involved, but I try not to use the same book for two different prompts. That's just me. Your prompts, you do you. Uh, if I Stay uh, is a YA. Um, if you saw the movie, you have a general idea already. I gave it four out of five bookmarks. Comatose Mia tells her story 
in flashes of memory and out-of-body experiences as she watches her extended family and loved ones come together after a tragic car accident. And as she's finding out what happened to the rest of the people in the car and what uh, everyone is doing. And she's flashing back to parts of her life, connecting herself to these people. You know, she has to make the decision whether to stay or to move on. If you haven't read it or seen the movie, I'm not going to say anymore. I'll let you decide, but let's think about this. This is YA. I'm just going to leave that right there. So there you have it. Now it's quite a few books that I got through in the month of February. For a short month, I got eight, eight books in February, listening and reading. So woohoo. So I'll see you at the end of March for another book talk. I'll make another other videos prior to that. Don't worry. Don't miss me too much. Um, I'm still working on getting videos done twice a week. It's a work in progress. Sorry for any delays. Me. So if you like these type of videos, please click like, subscribe, dingling the notification bell, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.